Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you guys are new here, my name is Jenna. This is a video I've never done before because for the first time since starting my channel two and a half, three years ago, I started it in 2020. I've had my YouTube channel for two and a half years and I've been filming on the same camera this whole time. What you guys are being filmed on at this very moment is called the Sony ZV-1. It's the best camera ever. It's such a good compact camera. I actually have like a wide angle lens attachment on this camera too because I want to get that like wide angle effect. But you know what you guys? It's time to invest. I got a new camera. I am so excited. I wanna go through with you guys doing my first impressions of my new camera. It's honestly not too different, but it's definitely an upgrade for what I'm using right now. This is the Sony ZV-E10 ASPC sensor, interchangeable lens. And honestly, I cannot wait to open it and just test it out with you guys. Excuse me, my dog is like eating these boxes. Do you wanna say hi? <gasps> say hi, this is Beast, my puppy. Basically, the biggest difference between the Sony ZV-1 and the Sony ZV-E10 is that I can use interchangeable lenses. So we have a kit lens that comes with this. And then I actually got two new lenses that I'm going to test out with you guys. I might test these out for a little bit to see like which one I want to keep, but I'm not going to keep both. These are both Sony lenses that are supposed to work well with the Sony ZV-E10. This is the 11 millimeter f1.8. And then this is the 10 to 20 millimeter so it kind of zooms in a little bit f4 so i'm actually really curious i don't know which one i'm gonna keep but we're gonna test out both of these today and i'm just gonna test out in general my new camera <gasps> wow i can't wait i took off the mic that i've been using so i'm just using the mic right now that's on the sony zv1 this is what the setup looks like of the sony zv1 with the wide angle lens attachment it is again an attachment it's really just like a sticker that has fallen off so many times and i'm just i've had enough so i'm ready to upgrade let's unbox the new camera <laughs> okay right off the bat this camera kind of feels just like the sony zv1 but it's so much bigger and it has kind of all the same features first of all it feels very familiar because it kind of reminds me a lot of the sony zv1 it just feels like the older brother of it almost it's much easier to hold here because of the battery the lens is bigger oh my gosh it just is so nice any newbies and i'm a newbie myself i'm gonna put a picture of the difference between the sensors of the sony zv1 and the sony zv e10 i still think if you're starting a youtube channel which i was like two and a half years ago the sony zv1 is the best thing the body of this is only like 50 dollars more for a much better sensor but you do have to get your own lens it's so pretty i'm actually actually so obsessed with it this is supposed to be just like the bigger brother and like better not bigger brother but it's supposed to be like the upgraded version of the sony zb1 especially if you're starting out on youtube and you just want a compact camera i actually love it but this i'm so excited to upgrade i believe all in all the kit lens and the body is 800 dollars maybe 850. I'll put a link to everything down below just in case. And the Sony ZV-1 is $700. So it's not too big of an upgrade, but if you wanna get like a wide angle shot for your camera, you probably won't be using the kit lens. The kit lens is just good to have because you do have zooming capabilities. So I think that's everything. Let's go ahead and test out this camera. I wanna give you like a very before and after of using the Sony ZV-1 and the Sony ZV-E10. So let's just have first impressions right now. I've never used it, so I'm really excited. Hi guys, it's actually the next day. I'm filming a couple of clips afterwards because the camera was dead and it's supposed to come with like at least I think like 50% battery, but the camera was just straight up dead. So I had to charge it for an hour and then by that time, it was dark. I'm filming this the next day now so that you guys can see as consistent as possible what the two cameras look like. Just this is the kit lens, there's no microphone on. This is just a back and forth between the Sony ZV-1 and the Sony ZV-E10. I really haven't used it too much other than the clips that I took last night, but right off the bat, you guys, this camera is so much nicer. Just little things that I didn't like about the Sony ZV-1, like if I have my tripod on, I can actually take out the camera battery and the SD card without having to take off the tripod. I can see what percentage I have on the battery. The battery itself lasts like two hours instead of less than one hour before. And it's just overall like a much nicer, smarter, better 
camera. Again, I'm gonna put a picture of the two sensors. Basically, this is just a much nicer camera for only $50 more plus the kit lens, which I think is really good because I still think the Sony ZV-1 is a lot better to start out with if you're just starting with cameras and vlogging and YouTube and everything. But I think if you're ready to upgrade, if you're just making lifestyle content like me, getting something like the Sony ZV-E10 won't hike up the price so, so much. You just have to get different lenses. And okay, let me show you guys the zoom. This is the kit zoom lens. And if you zoom in, oh my gosh, this is 50. Like, can you see my earring, my other earring? That's all the way zoomed in. And then you can zoom all the way out just as normal. That's what the kit lens is. I think it's a pretty stable kit lens, honestly. And it's only 50 or $100 if you get it as a bundle with the actual camera. So I think that everyone should get the kit lens if you are getting the Sony ZV-E10. And then you just invest in a separate lens, which I'll show you guys two separate ones. But this is the back and forth of the cameras. And then let me show you guys the difference between using the microphone that's built into the Sony ZV-E10 and my Sony ECM G1 external microphone. Before and after. Can you guys tell a difference? I always can tell a difference. It's just that much more crisper, clearer, louder. I just love Sony everything clearly, but okay. Now let me show you guys the two new lenses. This is what the 11 millimeter F 1.8 lens looks like. Natural daylight, no steady shot, no cropping. This is what it looks like. Because I'll insert maybe some of the clips, but I'm like looking back at the footage and I filmed my first impressions with steady shot on and steady shot on the Sony ZV-1 and the Sony ZV-E10, it basically does like a 30% crop so that it's not shaking the background if I'm like walking. I think it's very, very nice. So this is what it looks like without steady shot. And here's the same lens, 11 millimeter wide angle lens with steady shot on. I'm holding it the same way, arm's length. As you guys can tell, it crops in a lot, which is initially why I wanted to get a new camera in the first place and not use the Sony ZV-1 anymore because I like steady shot. I think it's really smart. And when you're walking around, it's just a lot more smooth to watch on your end. But without the wide angle lens, it just, I would it would look like this. And I don't like that. So I wanna be a little bit farther away. So with steady shot on and wide angle lens on, I feel like it looks pretty normal. So before I show you guys what the 10 to 20 zoom lens looks like, the F4, this is what the camera looks like, the 11 millimeter lens on like selfie mode. So it's a much bigger camera. I have the silicone cover on and I have the mic on. Here's how it looks. It's definitely a little bit heavier but i don't really think it's that big of a difference it's so nice last thing about the 11 millimeter lens is that even though there's no zooming capabilities on the lens itself you can use the digital zoom that's on the sony zv e10 so i tested it out but it was in such bad lighting that i'm just going to show you guys here so this is me zooming in using the camera's zooming capabilities it's basically just doing like a digital crop I think it kind of cuts out the quality when you do that. So usually people just use the lens or use its own zoom lens, but I guess that's an option. I just, I don't know which lens I want before. And here's the after. This is the 10 to 20 zoom lens from Sony. It's F4, which means that in natural daylight, you shouldn't tell any difference at all. It's really just at night, which maybe I'll just show you guys clips as I'm talking about it right now, because I just wasted way too much time testing all that out and I just thought all the wrong stuff. But right after this, I'll show you guys clips of the two different lenses at night. But this is what it looks like. This is the 10 millimeter, no steady shot on. I love how wide it is. It's just so freaking nice. And this one actually zooms. So I'm gonna zoom using the actual zoom lens. Zooming, oh, okay. Okay, so this is on a full wide angle lens, 10 millimeters, and then using the zooming, excuse me, this is the zoom, <laughs> it's crazy. It's really, really nice, I think. Oh wait, no, it goes to 20. Like this. And then this is the actual lens. Much nicer. So yeah, I genuinely do not know which lens to keep. I will insert right now the clips of me testing out something at night. I did like two side-by-side -side clips of the 11 millimeter F 1.8 and the 10 to 20 millimeter f4 let me know if you guys can tell a difference outside of this video i feel like i've been talking about it a lot so i'm really not sure but i feel like ideally the zoom lens is better just because it's more versatile so i want to keep that one the most but i'm not sure so this is what steady shot looks like so it's much more zoomed in but since this is a 10 millimeter and not 11 millimeter i think it zooms out a little bit more i feel like most of the time i vlog at my house or in someone's house anyways. I really don't walk around too much when I vlog, but it doesn't make too much of a difference to me. It like honestly kind of feels the same. It's really just the low light situation that I'm not sure of. Ah, ah, ah. Let's get some clips of Mr. Beast. Sit, sit, can you roll over? 
Roll over. Yay! Good boy. Good boy. Oh my gosh, Mr. Beast, you're so clear. You're so clear. Now I'm going to show you guys two clips that I don't know if Steady Shot was on, but I was going back and forth in low light between the 11 millimeter and this lens right now, the 10 to 20 zoom lens. So and I'm going to talk to you guys afterwards about a little Q&A. You guys had some questions about why I'm changing my setup and stuff. But yeah, okay. Insert those clips. Oh, interesting. Also, I'm like so close. Okay. <laughs> Here's how this looks. It's 830 and it's the summertime. So there's still like a little bit of light, but not any sunlight. I already see like a huge difference. This is actually crazy. Wow. Already, I'm really glad that I got these two lenses because this is the 16, because the kit lens on the Sony ZV-11, excuse me, because the kit lens on the Sony ZV-E10 is 16 to 50 millimeters. So this is me standing like pretty far away, but at least if I want, I can zoom in. So, okay, I'll zoom in all the way for you. Okay, that's like what? Ooh, this is what I can't decide. I got a wide angle lens. This is 11 millimeters and it's f 1.8, which means basically you can film pretty well in low light, but there's no zooming. And then this is 10 to 20 millimeters and it's f4. So you can zoom, you can still be wide angle, but it supposedly is just not as good with low light. So I'm gonna test it out. It's actually a good time to pick up this video because the low light is beginning and I just wanna test it out because it might not be that noticeable for the purposes of my YouTube channel. Like I just make lifestyle content, so I don't need too much, like really, really perfect lighting all the time. I don't know. We'll just see if they make a difference, but here's an update to the camera. It is so nice. I'm so happy with it. I'm going to put some accessories on my camera too, just while I can. This is my Sony ECM G1 external microphone. I just think it's worth it having an extra microphone, but right now I just want to show you guys what I sound like, I guess, with no external microphone. It's already an upgrade from the Sony ZV-1's internal microphone, but I feel like it's a very well-known thing that Sony has pretty good internal microphone. Other things accessory-wise that I got for my camera, I got one of those like cute silicone protectors because I do want to protect this camera, but I got a black one i was so close to getting the white one not that literally anyone cares and not that it matters but i just ended up getting a pink silicone protective sleeve for the camera and then i do have two extra battery packs that i need to get like charging blocks for but i do have extras because i just think it's worth having extra battery packs for your cameras and i did actually get a bag because i don't have a camera bag and i just think it would be useful now that i've upgraded my equipment and everything to have like an actual camera bag and stuff so this is what i got it's just from amazon it's like a sling bag too, which I like. So this is my camera bag. Oh wow, that looks a lot better. Okay, this is what it looks like just taking out my camera of like arm's length. That definitely makes a lot more sense. The steady shot was on before and so it was cropped in, but here's how it looks. The 10 millimeter looks actually kind of crazy. Like I feel like I could just do this and my arm wouldn't hurt so much and I still feel very wide angle and low light. I really don't think I can tell a difference. Plus I would do this anyways. I honestly don't know which one to keep. I'm rambling because I don't want to keep both lenses because they're each like five, six hundred dollars. So I don't want both and they're very similar. I'm just trying to figure out which one is best. Okay, and this is with the 11 millimeter lens. Oh my gosh. You can see like my whole apartment. That's actually crazy. This is the 11. I hope you guys enjoyed those like chaotic first impression clips. I think that's actually what it's like for a lot of people that are trying out new equipment for the first time. You're just kind of like mind blown by everything and then you're skeptical. And then, because if you bought any of these lenses or the Sony ZV E10, it's just a really big purchase. So I really just honestly want to test out these two lenses. I'm not sure which one I'm going to keep, but I think I'm just going to test vlogging like an entire video on each one morning to night and see how it works. But right now you guys are on the 10 to 20 millimeter F4. So this is the one that's like not as good in low light, but I think during the day it's really good. And I just really like that it's zoomable. I feel like this lens, the 11 millimeter 1.8, this is definitely a better lens for low light and it's just a better lens overall, but I do think that the 10 to 20 millimeter F4 is just more versatile because I do have the zooming capabilities. So I basically just have to choose, do I want zooming capabilities or should I use the better lens and just crop when I need B-roll? And I do have the kit lens, which is a zoom lens. This is 16 to 50 millimeters, I think. What I'm leaning towards is having 
the better lens and then switching out when I need B-roll to use the kit lens for that because I did pay for the kit lens. So if any of you guys are creators watching this video and if any of you guys were ever in my position, definitely let me know what you guys decided and if you regret that decision or not because I'm obviously just not 100% sure of what I wanna keep. But I really like this camera overall. I feel like it's very clear and it just feels like such an upgrade. Not only is everything inside the camera a lot better, it's just a lot more durable. It's an ASPC sensor instead of a one inch sensor and it's just overall a better camera. I love that the battery life is so much better on this camera because one, you can see what percentage you have left and you're not just bound to like the three little bars of the battery. And two, I'm pretty sure on full charge, this battery lasts like two hours. So that already alone is really, really good for vlogging. A lot of times I just have to have my extra battery packs, which is why I got them. But if I can take this around for more or less like the whole day and be good for vlogging, then that is just pristine. I did want to leave some time though at the end of this video because this is just a very quick like first impressions video of my new vlogging setup, but I wanted to see if you guys had any questions and you had a couple. Aside from my actual equipment, one question that you guys had is what software do I use to edit all of my videos? And I use Final Cut Pro. I'm pretty sure the full cost of Final Cut Pro is maybe around like in between 200 and 300 dollars but it's a flat fee it's not like a monthly subscription or anything it's just a flat fee up front and final cut pro is honestly really easy to use i think it's very easy to learn there's lots of new things you can learn all the time but i really like it and i feel like i've been really stepping up my like editing game of learning how to color grade just doing faster cuts and stuff and i think that final cut pro is the best way for me to learn how to edit better. So a lot of you guys are just asking overall, like, do I still use my Sony ZV-1? Am I still gonna use it moving forward? And why did I decide to make the shift? Let me just say that the Sony ZV-1 is such a good camera. And I definitely have a lot to learn on this camera right here, but the Sony ZV-1 is just the easiest thing to use. It's so compact. And I think that if you're just starting out with vlogging or having a YouTube channel at all, I think it's a really good initial investment to make if you just need that push and you want something really high quality. The Sony ZV-1 is so freaking good. It's actually amazing. And I've loved using it for my first three or so years of having a YouTube channel. I think that for me at this point as a creator, I was driven mainly by two different things. One, I feel like I kind of maxed out my use of the Sony ZV-1. I, I was zooming in when I wanted to. I was traveling with it all the time and I even got like the wide angle lens attachment. Overall, I just wanted a more wide angle frame for vlogging. And a lot of times the Sony ZV-1 just didn't give me enough of that. So I got the wide angle attachment. Let me get my camera. I got this wide angle attachment. So this is the camera, the Sony ZV-1, and then everything kind of here onwards. This is actually like a big sticker that's on the camera. And I just really wanted like a wider frame when vlogging. I just felt like when I was walking or if I had the camera at arm's length, it was still just a little bit too close for my personal preference. So I ended up getting this attachment and it's lasted me a really long time, but it's at the point where it's kind of falling a lot. And I even broke it once before, so I bought a new one. It's only $50, so it's a pretty small investment, but I think it really helps overall just give your frame a wider view when you're vlogging on the Sony ZV-1. The Sony ZV-1 Mark II is wider, so I would definitely recommend you guys research that, but I actually have no experience using the ZV-1 Mark II. I've just always used the Sony ZV-1 original. So I was largely motivated by wanting to upgrade all of my tech and my hardware to give myself a wider frame, but also just a more high quality. And my second reason is that truthfully, I did get a business credit card recently and I got the Chase ink reserve. If you spend $6,000 in the first three months, then you get $750 cash back. So I kind of use that as like a good incentive for me that if I invest in this new hardware that I've been thinking about for a while now, then if I reach the limit in three months, then the rewards will kind of pay for the camera itself. And I'll just have to pay for a new lens because I did want to purchase a separate wide angle lens. I would say that's like my whole story of why I wanted to switch everything. I don't think there's anything wrong at all with the Sony CV1. I would really, really, really highly recommend you guys were asking this. Yes, this is such a good camera to start out with if you're just starting a YouTube channel or learning how to vlog or just learning how to document anything in video. I think the Sony ZV-1 is so good. Forgot to mention, I'm going to give my Sony ZV-1 to my sister because she has a really old camera she's been using for her YouTube videos and she's not sure what she wants next. And I've been telling her to get the Sony ZV-1, so I'm going to give her my old one so that she can use it. That's what I'm doing with my old one. And then in terms of other questions you guys have, that's honestly all you guys really want to know was why I was switching overall and what prompted the switch and I would say that my last question that you guys were asking was that is the Sony ZV E10 easy for beginners I would say that it's not as easy as the Sony ZV-1, but that's just because it's a lot smarter of a camera and the sensor is larger. You have to learn how to use 
lenses and stuff and kind of just overall learn the science of what these different lenses even are and which one would be best suited for you. So I would say if you're looking for one as a beginner, get the Sony ZV-1 and then once you kind of have mastered editing, filming, knowing how that works for you and you want to invest even further, then I would get the Sony ZV-E10 next because I'm not too advanced, but I just wanted something in between like a full frame $2,500 camera and this $750 camera. And that's this, the Sony ZV-E10. Oh, and lastly, you guys are curious how much all of this costed. Let me just go on my Amazon right now because I purchased everything on Amazon so that if I did have any trouble, I could just easily return everything. The Sony ZV-E10, the camera that I got, including the kit lens was $798, so $800. And then this 11 millimeter F1.8 was $549. And then the 10 to 20 millimeter, the one that you guys are on right now, that is actually $748. $8. It's a G lens from Sony and I'm, I'm not exactly sure the difference between having a G lens on Sony and a non-G lens but I think the 10 to 20 is an overall supposed to be more versatile and having the zoom capabilities I think makes it a little bit more expensive. This is more compact. It's an overall better lens because it can let in more light being an f1.8 lens but there's no zooming capabilities. Take that as you will. This is cheaper, smaller, more compact but there's no zooming and it's better in low light and then the one that you guys are on right now is $750, has zooming capabilities, but it's not as good in low light. But let me know in the comments right now, if you're still watching, if you guys saw a difference in low light using the 10 to 20 millimeter versus the 11 millimeter. Because if you guys can't tell a difference, like I don't really make very cinematic types of vlogs anyways. I just document my life with you guys. If you guys couldn't tell a big difference and if it didn't change the way that you were viewing the video, then I might just keep the more versatile one. But I don't know, because this is really good too. So let me know. Those are all of my questions. You guys are just very curious about how much everything costed, what prompted the switch, and that's everything. Okay, well, I'm going to end off this video because this was just a first impressions going through my new vlogging setup, testing out video. As a lifestyle vlogger, if you guys have any additional questions, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, all future vlogs from now are gonna be on the Sony ZV-E10 as of July, 2023. So I hope you guys enjoy this and I hope you guys can see a difference. I am a big proponent of just in general investing in yourself and I just can't wait to use it in my vlogs moving forward. Aside from videos like this, I make weekly vlogs documenting life through my nine to five, through my normal life, through my life outside of work, being a content creator and a girlfriend, a friend, person who likes to work out and just overall live a very normal life. So if you guys are interested in any of that, then make sure you're subscribed. I post new videos every Tuesdays and Fridays. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video, but until then, miss you already. Thank you.